you have lost. Rise, Meg. The Force will be with you. Teeny, teeny, teeny. So as you know, in chapter 13 of The Mandalorian Season 2, we finally got an insight into Grogu's backstory, but not enough. We learned that he was trained at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant by many masters during the timeline of the prequels and was saved from Order 66. While we don't know who rescued him or who his masters were, there is an overlooked comic from the early 2000s which may give us some more insight into Grogu's past. Inverse actually wrote an article which highlights the importance of this comic. I'm of course referring to Star Wars Tales number 13, which is the 13th issue of the Star Wars Tales series published in 2002 by Dark horse comics. This comic seemingly ties Grogu to Mace Windu in a very indirect way and may even explain one possibility that could be explored by Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau in The Mandalorian Season 3. I will also say that while this comic does not mention Grogu, it could show us important insight into the kind of Jedi childhood that he had. So my dear friends, without any more jibber jabber, let's take a look at the comic. In Star Wars Tales number 13, the entire issue was devoted to Mace Windu. The stories followed him as he encountered a time paradox, hunted down a murderer, and taught his Padawan a lesson about the Sith. The last of these three stories, however, is the most interesting. Mace is showing his Padawan Depa Balaba the Jedi nursery. She tells him about dreams she had about her parents, or at least people that she thinks were her parents, and Mace chides her for having such attachments. Another example of the Jedi being sociopaths. All of a sudden, one of the infants is stolen by bounty hunter Vianna Pau. Mace assumes that she's going to sell the child on the black market, but Vianna reveals that she was actually hired by the child's parents, who regret allowing their child to be taken. Mace spares her life, but returns the child back to their parents. It's an intriguing story, but the most fascinating part isn't the plot. It's in the foreground of a panel showing the Jedi nursery. Among all the infants is a tiny green being with very familiar looking ears and face. What is very strange is the inclusion of a baby Yoda species, or rather a baby of the Yoda species, even if it's not the baby that we know and love, Grogu. The inclusion of this child in the wake of the release of Attack of the Clones, which is almost 20 years ago, opens up a whole realm of possibility. Could this have been one of the comics that inspired Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau to create Baby Yoda, Grogu? And what's eerie is the fact that it's centered around Mace Windu, the Jedi Master we all know and love who is speculated to still be alive after the events of Revenge of the Sith. In spite of his fall out of the window on Coruscant, many fans believe he's still alive and could even show up in the Book of Boba Fett or even in The Mandalorian Season 3. Could he have been the one who saved Grogu and is this Jedi nursery story something which inspired Dave Filoni to create the story of Grogu and further to perhaps explore a connection to Mace Windu further down the line? Considering Grogu's long lifespan, he probably spent a handful of years among the infants being indoctrinated into the Jedi Order. This flashback would serve as a great way to add context to the Jedi methods. After all, if a group of fans is upset about Grogu eating eggs, just wait until they realize the Jedi stole babies. A flashback to Grogu's beginnings could give us a lot of insight into what a Jedi nursery was and more background to the Jedi in the prequel era. It could even show us what Ahsoka hinted at in her appearance, that the Jedi are not the perfect good guys that the galaxy seems to see them as. At the end of the day, this comic could be completely irrelevant to the Mandalorian, but given the fact that once upon a time Grogu would have been part of one of these Jedi nurseries, just like the baby of the Yoda species that we see here, it would be a wasted opportunity to not show more of Grogu's backstory, hopefully in the form of flashbacks. And speaking of Mace Windu, I know a lot of you believe that he is completely dead and shouldn't return to Star Wars, but there's a big faction of the fandom who really wants to see him again and is convinced that he survived the fall in the climactic scene in Revenge of the Sith. So my friends, on this subject of Jedi nurseries, it isn't something that is spoken about in depth. So perhaps this is the perfect opportunity to give a bit of backstory. It's worth pointing out that the Jedi Temple on Coruscant is vastly underestimated in terms of its facilities and its size. The Jedi nursery was located in the Jedi Temple dormitory, which was in the area of the ancient edifice that contained the youngling nurseries, the Padawan dormitories, the Knight's Billet, and the chambers of the Jedi Masters but it was segregated and occupied by nurse droids. I also want to point out the fact that the masters, the Jedi masters, were very protective of the younglings that were kept. And as such, security protocol was quite high. It's almost certain that Grogu was being kept here while he was a very young baby. And without a doubt, Jedi Master Yaddle and Jedi Master Yoda would have looked over him. 
In the words of Wikipedia, overseen by older Jedi, the nurseries of the temple were used to hold the youngest of the initiates brought to Coruscant by the Acquisition Division. With age, the younglings would be sorted into clans and placed into dormitories, which were monitored by a clan leader. The dormitories of the accommodation sector were large enough to accommodate an entire clan of initiates, each overseen by a Jedi Knight or Master. Once the initiates were chosen to become Padawans, they moved into slightly more private chambers within the dorms, but were all on the central hallway. These chambers were equipped with a small cot and a desk. All rooms were modelled to maintain an atmosphere suitable to the different species of the Jedi within the Order. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this sounds like a mini Hogwarts within Coruscant. Now, the great thing about Jedi nurseries is not much else is known about them. We never saw them in Attack of the Clones or any other instalment of the Skywalker saga. As such, this could be elaborated upon, as I say, if they include Grogu's backstory with flashbacks to his time at the temple. As other YouTubers have suggested, we could even see Grogu in a flashback in the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Bear in mind the fact that it's been confirmed we will see flashbacks to the Great Jedi Purge of Order 66, so hopefully we will discover who rescued him and how he was rescued. It could even be shown in The Bad Batch. So that, my friends, is all I have for you, but I do want to leave you on a high note by showing you this picture of Ewan McGregor. This is from the other day, training for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and getting in absolutely phenomenal shape. As you're probably aware, he's been working very hard on his lightsaber skills and he's going to be absolutely phenomenal in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. So let me know what you guys think of this in the comments down below. What do you think of this comic? Did you find it interesting? Do you believe that we're going to see more backstory to Grogu in The Mandalorian Season 3? And do you think that Mace Windu is still alive? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. I'm wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Also, if you're feeling generous, please head over to my Patreon page, where for just 2 or $10 a month, you can get exclusive access to content that's not found here on YouTube. I'm Star Wars Meg. I'll see you all tomorrow.